Hey guys, Mikey here from ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I test to see if 18650 cells are fake or genuine and specifically I'll be testing Litocala cells. Now Litocala cells are from a seller on AliExpress and they're some of the most common cells you can find out there because they're just uh, really easy to order when you're uh, ordering to anywhere outside of the US because they generally have free shipping anywhere in the world. Now, uh, this is one of those Litocala cells. I'll put some links in the description so you guys can see what cells I'm talking about. And this is the same cell, Samsung 25R, but from Bruzen.com. That's where I get my cells when I'm in the US, just because I know those are genuine. But when I'm outside the US, like here in Tel Aviv, I usually get these cells from Litocala. Now, I want to make sure when I get these cells that I test them to ensure that they're genuine. Because when you're buying from AliExpress or eBay or any of these sort of somewhat anonymous uh, distant sources, you never really know for sure that you're getting a good uh, genuine cell. So these are the ways that I'm going to test these cells. Now, first of all, there are a number of physical tests you can do. There's a great article by Battery Pro that I'm going to link below. Um, and that goes through all the physical tests. You know, you can weigh these, uh, you can compare the shrink wrap, um, you can check the top where the vent holes are. These check out. They've got, you know, uh, three prongs, three holes, just like Samsung 25R cells should. Um, and you can go through all of those physical checks, you know, the coloring, that kind of stuff. These cells uh, from Litokata all check out in that respect. So uh, I'm not going to go through all those right now. But again, you should definitely read that article to see all those. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can capacity test these. So you use like an Opus or one of Lito Kala's own testers and you uh, just slide these suckers in there and do a discharge test and it'll tell you how many milliamp hours there are. That's another good way to test but it's not conclusive because just because this cell was 2500 milliamp hours like a Samsung 25R should be, it doesn't actually mean it's a genuine 25R. It could be some cheaper cell that can't sustain 20 amps continuous like a Samsung 25R should. So the best way to test these, what I'm going to do here, is to do a discharge at a high current rate and then measure the temperature. That will tell you if you've got a genuine or a fake cell. Now to perform this discharge test, I'm going to take what I have here is just a bunch of power resistors, all wired in parallel. I'm going to connect these power resistors through a watt meter that I'm going to then connect to my 18650 cells. And I already have here uh, another one of these Litokala cells. I have this one connected just into our uh, Vruzen V2 caps and now to answer the most common question I've been getting when are these V2 caps going to be available uh, for purchase and I have a date for you now it is on Tuesday this coming Tuesday April 17th that should be if I get this video up on Friday four days from now we're really excited to get these caps out there these are rated for 20 amps each continuous they can do even more than that in pulses but we've rated them for 20 amps continuous and so that should be plenty for testing these samsung 25 r cells which are rated for 20 amps continuous as well so i'm going to uh, connect this cell into my v2 caps which are uh, the high current rating got anderson power pole connectors on here so this i can plug directly into the source side of my watt meter uh, on the load side, I've got it connected to five power resistors here. I'll put links to these as well. I just got these on AliExpress. They're dirt cheap. Uh, and then I will be able to test the capacity of this cell while doing a high current discharge. And the most important thing is I'm going to measure the temperature of the cell during the discharge and compare it to the data sheet. Because if it's getting super hot, hotter than it should based on the data sheet, I'll know that this is a fake cell that they've just rewrapped and called a 25R. But if the temperature stays within a normal range, then I will know that this is a genuine 25R because it can handle that high current and all of the physical checks uh, check out. Um, so I'm going to be doing this with my uh, thermal imaging camera. You don't need a thermal camera to do this. You can just take either one of those um, laser thermometers or even like a, like a fever thermometer or a barbecue thermometer and just tape that sucker onto the side of the cell. All you need is something that can measure temperature. I'll be using my Seek thermal camera here. I got this uh, on Amazon on one of those big sales. It was like Black Friday or Prime Day or something. Um, but I really love this camera. It connects to my iPhone and I think this cost me like 180 bucks or something when it was on sale. Still not, you know, cheap, but compared to thermal imaging cameras, uh, you know, they usually start in the many hundreds of dollars. So for 180, this was a great deal. But like I said, you don't need a thermal camera. You can use other, you know, thermometers or anything to measure your temperature. All right, let's get testing. Now I'll connect the Litokala cell to the watt meter and to the load. And if we check the watt meter, even though it's a bit hard to see, we can see that we're pulling about 15 amps right at the beginning here, going down to 14 amps soon. 
and that current it's going to drop a bit as the voltage of the cell drops, probably down to about 11 amps or so by the very end of the test, where I'll let the voltage drop down to about 2.5 volts. Now let's fast forward a bit through this uh, thermal discharge test and we can see how hot this cell gets by the end. So now we're right at the end of the discharge here, and I'll cut it off at 2.5 volts, which is the absolute minimum for these cells. And we reach 2.474 amp hours with a final temperature of 58 degrees C. Now if we consult with published data for genuine Samsung 25R cells, we can see how our Lito Kala cell stacks up. Now the blue line here is the temperature for a 15 amp continuous discharge, and the green line is a 10 amp continuous discharge. Our discharge was not continuous, but it averaged approximately 12 to 12.5 amps, so we should reasonably fall between these two, somewhere around approximately 65 or 66 degrees C. However, this test was performed at 23 degrees C, and our test was a bit cooler at about 14 or 15 degrees C, which means that our final temperature of 58 C actually fits quite well with this published data. Now if you didn't have a genuine cell to compare to, this would be a good way to test your cell because you can see that your cell's data fits or maybe it doesn't fit with the published data very well. In our case it does fit well. But we also have a genuine cell here, the one from Vruzen.com, so let's do a discharge on the genuine cell and compare that as well. discharge at 2.5 volts again, and it looks like our capacity was 2.416 amp hours, and our final temperature reached 55C, which is very close to the 58C of our Lito Kala cell. It's slightly different, but we're not exactly using the most precise discharge testing gear here, nor are we in laboratory conditions, so I'd say that this is fairly consistent performance, so I'm pretty happy with this. So that's basically the way I test my cells when I buy them on AliExpress, especially these Lito Kala cells just to make sure that I know I'm getting genuine cells and that they're going to perform the way that they should. So by doing a discharge test at a high current, not necessarily the maximum current for the cell, but a fairly high current and comparing that to the data sheet, you can see if the temperature range you're getting is within that of a normal genuine cell. And in this case, it looks like it is. The small difference we saw between the Lito Kala cell and the genuine cell from Fruzen it might be because the Lito Kala cell, uh, they might not necessarily have been grade A cells. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, but the small difference of three degrees was not a huge difference. And if you recall from one of my last videos, when I did a thermal discharge test of Sanyo GA cells at about the same current, we'd gotten up to over 80 degrees C. So that gives you an idea of if these cells aren't really 25 Rs, how high they can actually get. So I hope you guys found that video helpful. Thank you for watching. Um, remember that if you want to get the V2 caps uh, for doing high current battery building, we'll be releasing those this coming Tuesday, April 17th. You can do all sorts of interesting things with them that you couldn't do before. This is going to be a uh, electric skateboard battery when I get some time to finish this sucker up. I'll make a video showing how to do that. Um, and basically anything that runs high power, you know, electric skateboards, e-bikes, uh, electric vehicles, uh, high power uh, battery banks, basically anything you need that's going to be running on high power, you can do with these V2 caps. Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Um, that was anyone who commented on my April Fool's video last week, and the winner from that video is... Doug K. Congratulations. Uh, let me know in a private message which one of my books you'd like for free, either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, or the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, and I'll get that sent out to you. And anybody else who wants to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment to below this video. You can say anything you want, and hopefully you'll be the randomly chosen commenter at the end of my next video. All right, thanks guys. See you next time.